weird angle. Hi guys, so I'm at a bit of a weird angle. I just wanted to kind of film from this aspect because you guys haven't seen this bookshelf sort of properly in a video since my reading vlog um, when I was like setting all this up. But anyway, I'm here to do an August book haul. Um, I've got a few books from NetGalley. What I'm going to do here, I think I'm just going to name them for you so then I can give you a better synopsis than that once I read them. I've gone crazy again on it, but pretty much of late I've been reading just like NetGalley books during my lunchtime reads at work, so I'm getting through them. I just really need to calm down. Every time I go on there to leave feedback, I see all these cool books that sound amazing, and of course I request them. So recently here are the ones that i haven't told you about yet so we have i'm going to be a bit antisocial for a little bit just because i'm going to be glancing down pretty much reading from my reading journal so i've got wake up grateful by christy nelson vitality by krista Levery, the lost wonderland diaries by j scott savage victories greater than death by charlie jane andrews Moon Bath by Dakota Hills and Sierra Brasher. Ever After by Olivia Vueg. My Riot by Rick Spears. The Wizard Volume 1 by Michael Sweater. I, can't, I don't know if I've missed off an L there because it just looks like McKay. So it might be McKay, it might be Michael, I can't remember if I just missed off the L or whatever. The House That Fell From The Sky by, Practic by Patrick Delaney. The Doors of Eden by Adrian Trevosky. I'm really excited about this one in particular because it will probably be my first Adrian Trevosky one and it's through their audio listening service that they've recently implemented onto the site. So hopefully I get to that relatively soon. Obviously with all of these I hope to get to relatively soon. Um, the Bone Fire by Georgie Dragman. The Arsonist City by Harla Glover. The Siren and the Deep Blue Sea by Carolyn Sparks. The Midnight Bargain by C. L. Bulk, Polk, sorry. Punch in the Air by E. B. Zaboy and Yusuf Salam. I'm excited about that one as well. Kiki McAdoo and the Graveyard Ballerinas by Colette Sewell. Alone Together by Jennifer Haupt. The Witching Stone by Danny Weston. Oh, I've already wrote that one. Some of these I might have accidentally like written twice. I'm going to cross that one off because I've already done that one and re-number these. Come on then. Yeah. Oh, it's you. Then we've got The House of Starks by Derek Coons. Derek Coonskin. Seven Devils by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May. The Night Swim by Megan Golden. And The Red Pill by Hari Kinsru. So those are all my ebooks that I've got to read. Um, next up, let's start with the first book that I got during August, I do believe. And that is The Binding by Bridget Collins. So I think this is a debut book and I'm pretty sure it's a standalone if I remember correctly. And I'm really into the vibe of gothic horror, not necessarily just like gothic literature. Um and you got a lot of those back in certain classics, but the idea of new versions in that sort of I like genre excite me, but I feel like in the back of my head I don't go to them as often as I would like to because they're heavier, denser reads and they take more out of me. But that is so my vibe, so I don't know why I keep pushing myself away from it. So this one is described to be, by Tracy Chevalier, to be a rich gothic entertainment that explores what books have trapped in them and remind us of the power of storytelling. So I believe this is one of those things, again, something that I would love to read about because it just sounds fantastic. Books about books. So I believe from this idea we have um, these people called binders and they can capture a person's memory. Um, and only binders can do this. So it's like if you have secrets, something you want to forget, something maybe dangerous from your past, you can go to a binder for them to bind that and basically lock it away in the form of a book. And then the memory is no longer in your head. So I guess, you know, if it's a dangerous situation, you can't be like tortured out of it because it's not in your mind, you know what I mean? So we're following a binder's apprentice called Emmett and I believe he stumbles on his own book and he starts to question himself and wonder what is the secret that he would have bind, bound, bound? Um, and I guess it's just the struggle of 
possibly him deciding whether he wants to read it or not. If I remember correctly, I think this has um, some LGBTQIA plus representation in it. Um, but again, I'll have to read to find out. So that is The Binding by Bridget Collins. Now these three books, I got all of these for a tenner. I bought them off of um, one of my friends that I follow on Bookstagram. She's called Deborah and she's from Hills of Books. I'll put her Instagram um, link in the description. We're just unhauling some books and selling a couple. So I got these. It sucks really because the next batch of books I've got that I bought today, they came to like 40 quid. Whereas I got three of these nice books for 10. I don't know. So, the first book I bought off of her was The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken and I read by this author the uh, Prosper Reading book and I really enjoyed that so I would like to, I guess, read more fantasy based books by this person. Um, I like this paperback edition, it just feels very like floppy and nice. Inside as well I also got a really nice sample of The Sea Witch by whoop, Sarah Hennin. Um, a little bookmark by Hatchet Children's Group and a little note that says enjoy which is super sweet um, so yeah I think a lot of people know what The Darkest Minds is about they have a movie now and I think I'd probably like to do like a movie versus book video that I like to do every so often um, and the funny thing is I don't really know an awful lot about this one so let's read it together when Ruby woke up on her 10th birthday, something about her had changed. Something threatening enough to make her parents lock her in the garage and call the police. Something that got her sent to Thormound, a brutal government rehabilitation camp. She might have survived the mysterious disease that had killed most of America's children, but she and the others have emerged with something far worse, frightening abilities they could not control. Now 16, Ruby is one of the dangerous ones. When the truth comes out, Ruby barely escapes with her life. She's on the run, desperate to find the only safe haven left for kids like her, East River. She joins a group of kids who have escaped their own camp. Liam, their brave leader, is falling hard for Ruby. But no matter how much she aches for him, Ruby can't risk getting close. Not after everything that happened with her parents. And then it, it kind of seems to tell you a lot about the actual plot without telling you the plot. So I'm going to leave it there because I feel like I'm learning too much like that. I'd rather just read about. Um, but yeah, I think it's like fantasy action. They've got some sort of abilities like special children with magical abilities or whatever. And it sounds like urban fantasy in a way because it sounds like our kind of world from what I understand. So yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that and then possibly go into the movie and seeing how I enjoy that too. And then this is another one that I remember being floating around on Bookstagram and Booktube, but I don't really remember what it was about either. And this is Royal Bastards by Andrew Schwartz. Being a bastard blows. <laughs> Tilla would know. Her father, Lord Kent of the Western Province, loved her as a child, but cast her aside as soon as, a, as, soon as he had a true born children. At 16, it seems like 16 is just this age. It's like the YA age, isn't it? Um, Tilla spends her days exploring long forgotten tunnels beneath the castle with her stable hand half brother Jax and her nights drinking with the servants passing out on Jax's floor while her castle bedroom collects dust. Tilla secretly longs to sit by her father's side enjoying feasts with the rest of the family instead she sits with other bastards like Miles of House Hampstead an awkward scholar who's been in love with her since they were children. And then it seems like there's a rebellion, um, royal mages, uh, all this sort of thing, murderous mercenaries the bastards band together. It sounds like a really epic quest sort of protect the kingdom sort of book. It's not awfully long either. Um, but yeah, so I'll be excited to try this one out as well. I don't read a lot of like royalty fantasy, I guess. And then this one here, I actually have one through NetGalley, um, but I keep forgetting to pick it up. And during the Black Resilience Bookstore tour that I took a part of in July, that I'd sort of followed the hashtag in that, um, this was one of the picks that I picked for a highlight and I said to myself there that I would probably just pick up a, a real physical copy um, just so I can see it and remind myself to pick it up because I am more of a physical reader um, I just read a lot more on my Kindle because of NetGalley which is good but this one I, I kind of would want a physical one anyway and I got it for a really good price of course like all three of those was £10 and that is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oin Khan Braithwaite, I'm so sorry, I haven't even looked to see the pronunciation, but I will try to do that when I actually review this. So it's shortlisted for the Women's Prize Fiction of 2019, and it just sounds so crazy. I've spoken a bit about it before in a previous haul when I was talking about NetGalley books, but I think what I'm going to do with this one is read it 
both simultaneously physical and ebook so i'll probably use the ebook for work and just catch up physically when i'm at home reading the actual book um but yeah basically what i remember from this is that this sister a very beautiful sister has this really horrible tendency to kill people um and then the sister that's kind of like lesser valued um not as beautiful not as i guess social climbing in that way um always just cleans up after her to try to make sure she doesn't get caught and it just sounds really wacky and bizarre um and it's very short so i'd be intrigued to see where the story actually goes and what happens and if there's more like maybe conversation on sisterhood and that sort of thing uh, despite the strange theme of just murdering people um if that becomes a thing because that'd be cool but yeah i'm looking forward nevertheless for just a fun random thrillery read <laughs> and i love the cover i'm not really one for like people on covers but that is <laughs> it's just so garishly beautiful <laughs> and then today we went to local high street we was having a dinner reservation actually we went to a giggling squid which is a thai restaurant it's really really nice but unfortunately the weather is really crappy i wanted to go around like walking and stuff it's just really raining but i'm not complaining because it's been so hot and humid here of late that we needed that water we just needed a break and some coolness um so i do really appreciate it but it meant we were running and ducking from shop to shop taking on masks putting off masks taking on masks that didn't make sense <laughs> putting on masks taking them off like in between shops um so i ended up going into wh smith partly just to kind of get out of the rain but also to low-key browse and i bought four books so one of them is rather controversial so i guess let's start with that one I have Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer and yes I know everybody's cancelled her because for one she talks about obviously toxic masculinity and this weird abusive relationship controlling all these other things and also she doesn't give the proper uh, recognition to her Native American more like minority characters in this book basically the wolf pack um, so there's that i'm going in knowing that and i saw someone saying you know nostalgia is not enough yes i know i completely agree nostalgia is not enough to be like oh but but you do have you know despite what the author is like and i think this goes the same for like jk rowling at the minute as well despite the author it's like the world and and when you read it as a teenager it kind of is taken by the fans now and this is something if you don't know um years and years ago Midnight Sun is basically Twilight from Edward's perspective. Years and years ago, um, I believe a couple of chapters or something were leaked on Twitter. And so the, Stephanie May was just like, right now I'm not releasing it. So sod you guys, which was obviously horrible because everyone at that time wanted it and it was kind of like, oh, whatever. And she's brought it out now. And I think it's a bit of a risky thing because so many people, I mean, obviously loads of people have bought it, but so many people were past that age now. Um, and I think she's probably like maybe lost a bit of the fan base. Obviously now us being older and understanding the issues in <laughs> the Twilight Saga. Um, so yeah, I get it. Nostalgia is not enough to enjoy it. But it's one of those things as well. Controversial readings. I enjoy reading. I, I, like, I've read Lolita recently and that's very controversial about the topic of paedophilia and all that sort of stuff. But I want to make my own opinion, if you know what I mean. Um, so yes, that is that is this that is midnight sun so i don't know when i'm going to read it i don't know if i'm going to do a reading vlog or a single review or anything like that i know a lot of people are still doing reviews and that but just remember that i just want to form my own opinion and kind of see if i feel how i felt in the innocence of the original books you know then I've got this. Um, I recently read This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. Um, and so when I saw a couple of months ago that he did this collaboration or edited this selection, I was very excited. And it is Dear NHS 100 Stories To Say Thank You, edited by Adam Kay. And it's got so many authors, some that I've read, I believe, some that I haven't. Um, it's got Ed Sheeran, like a load of just celebrities, I think, have written random stories i think some of them might be just like real life points <laughs> um just to say thank you and show their appreciation i believe yeah all profit all profits from this sale go towards the nhs charities together and the lullaby trust which is amazing it's like a 16 pound book so i'm glad that that is being used um 
sensibly, shall we say. So yeah, I think it looks like there might be some poetry in here. Some other long written fiction. Did I see David Tennant? <gasps> David Tennant. Oh my God. Yes, so it's got a lot of different celebrities and authors alike. Um, I'm very excited. Probably one that I'd be dipping in and out over maybe a couple of months or something. And then two books here, I also got some literary fiction. Um, this one was the winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2020, this year. And this is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. And I've heard a little bit about this, I think mainly from Sunbeam's Jess's, Jess's channel. Um, and I want to read The Underground Railroad Road by this author too. But this sounds really heartbreaking really, but also awesome. And from what I understand is this boy is sent to like this reform um, academy. It's a segregated reform school claiming to provide an education which will equip its inmates to become honourable and honest men. Um, but really it is just a, 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 a guise to really torture and abuse these boys, specifically young black boys. Um, and it's kind of just hidden under the mirage of... Um, being in a reform school and they're teaching discipline and good moral values and stuff that they're not they're hurting these people and kind of physically mentally maybe sexually I'm not sure um harming them so yes I don't know if this I, I assume it might have basis on a real life happenings but I'll have to do more research into that so there is that one and then the last book I put, picked up was The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Um, and this one, I think it's like a retelling or or a reimagining or rewording of um, the Troy Trojan War. Um, so it says, when the Greek Queen Helen is kidnapped by Trojans, the Greek sail in pursuit besieging the city of Troy, trapped in the Greek soldier's camp is another captured queen, Brysis. Condemned to be bed slave to Achilles, the man who butchered her family, she becomes a pawn in a menacing game between bored and frustrated warriors. In the centuries after this most famous war, history will write her off, a footnote in a bloody story scripted by vengeful men. But Bryce's has a very different tale to tell. Um, so yeah, I think it's just kind of following the voices that are forgotten, the female voices that are forgotten in some of these myths and legends. Um, and I love mythology, so it'd be interesting because I've not read anything, I've not read like um, The Sun, is it The Song of Achilles and all those, Circe, I've not read them in a, a modern book, if you know what I mean. Like now I've not, I've not read any like mythos, none of that, the only sort of reimaginings I've read is like the Percy Jackson books and those and I really adore them but I, I would like to read more adult based fiction on them if that makes any sense. So yes those are the books that I recently purchased um, or got on the, off of NetGalley. Let me know if you've read any of these, some of your thoughts and feelings, what you think should be raised on my priority bar and yeah I shall speak to you in another video soon. Bye. Every time we say